There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living home. Your presence, Lord. And I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves, when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone, Your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, You are welcome here. Come fly this place and feel the atmosphere your glory God is what I long for to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord, hey, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what I long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and feel the your glory, God, is what I long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness Come flood this place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what I long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Presence, Lord.
The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper When the darkness falls, it won't prevail Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph My God will never fail My God will never fail What the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for God, you turn it for good, yeah. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for God, you turn it for good. Yeah, yeah, the battle belongs to you Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory the battle belongs to you Lord mm. Jesus. 
You're the only one strong enough. Yours alone is the victory. I know that. Hi West Camp, my name is Sarah, or my friends call me Sez, and I was a little bummed that we couldn't get together and hang out this weekend, but I'm so excited that we still get to do something online, because God's put something on my heart that I want to share with you. So I'm currently in Newcastle, I work with YWAM Newcastle, and that stands for Youth with a Mission, so I'm a full-time missionary. I get to usually travel all around the world, but COVID has changed that just like it's changed a lot of things. So if you have come with us on a Youth Adventures trip to Byron Bay or to Fiji, I want to give you a little shout out and say hi. I'm sorry we can't hang out, but perhaps you can DM me and let me know how you are. I'd love to hear from you. So the theme for your camp is for real. For real, what a good theme. And I love the verse that you guys have gotten, which is Isaiah 43 verse 19, where God says, I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? What a great reminder, because God's doing something new, although it feels like the same old around here. I don't know about you, but I've been in lockdown for a couple of weeks now. My sister in Sydney has been in lockdown for a couple of months. This year feels a lot like last year. It feels like the same old, and we're probably all tired of it. A lot of plans have been changed. A lot of expectations have been dashed. Things are difficult in ISO. You know, we it's not... Great for humans to be alone and to be cut off from relationships. And thank goodness we're able to do things online, but it's not the same, is it? I want to encourage you that today, right now as you're watching this, God is with you. He's with me, he's present here, and he's with you on the other side of that screen. And he understands what it's like. He knows what your heart is going through. He understands the challenges. And you know, God has purposes for you in this time. There's something he's doing and it's a new thing. It might feel like the same old, but God is moving and he wants to do something new in your life. And that's a personal thing. And so we have the opportunity to open up our eyes and ask God to show us what he is doing. I know for me personally, God's been encouraging me that plans change, but purpose remains. I had a lot of plans change. I have had like, I think up to 32 to 40 flights cancelled. I'm supposed to be in Queensland next week. A lot of flights cancelled last year. It feels like I'm still in the same old, but God is doing something new. And I'm so glad that although I can't be with you in Dubbo, I still get to share the things that God's put in my heart. So I want to begin by us starting in Matthew chapter 16. And this is what God was just highlighting to me. And it's a story where Jesus is hanging out with his disciples and he asks them just a simple question. And he has to, has to ask it again. So I want us to just begin by this today. And I'm just praying that as I share, that God just highlights what you need to hear and gives you strength and courage for whatever you're facing. So Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, 
You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, You are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. So, you know, Jesus is asking the question to all the disciples. And they begin by just saying what they've heard about Jesus or what people are saying about Jesus. But then Jesus gets personal and he says, but who do you say I am? See, Jesus knew the rumors. He knew what people were saying, but he wanted to know what the disciples thought. He wanted to get real with them. He wanted to get on their level and be like, well, who do you say I am? And only Peter gets it right. Only Peter responds and he sees Jesus, not just as Jesus, the rabbi or the teacher, Jesus says the famous guy that everybody's hanging out with and wants to hear and see do miracles. Peter sees Jesus in a very different way. He sees Jesus as the Messiah, as the Savior. Think about that for a moment. What is, why does Peter see Jesus differently? What happened between Peter and Jesus? What, what relationship did they go through that was different to the other disciples? What situation had Peter experienced Jesus on a different level? As you think about that, if you're looking for a tip, you can just go one page back in your Bible to Matthew 14 and the answer's here. Some of you may have already gotten it. Peter was the only disciple to step out of the boat and walk on water with Jesus. So Peter had a very different experience with Jesus than the other disciples that changed the way he saw Jesus because Jesus had literally saved Peter's life. We're going to read about this here. So this is Matthew chapter 14, and we'll begin with verse 24. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came to them walking on water. When the disciples saw him walking on water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. So this story, the story between Peter and Jesus having this encounter begins with a storm. Jesus is up on a mountain praying. The disciples are out on the Sea of Galilee in the boat and a storm picks up. Now the first point we need to recognize is that the disciples, you know, some of them were seasoned fishermen. They'd probably seen many storms. Storms were probably an old thing for them. It was like same old. But this one must have been pretty bad because they were terrified. So I don't know about you, but I love storms, but I don't ever want to be out in the ocean on a boat or in the sea because that is not going to be safe. I love being on land. I love being in my house. But the disciples were out in the storm. And Jesus, who's praying on the mountain, he sees them. And so I want to remind you of that again. God sees you. But he doesn't just see you and look at you like, oh, look, they're struggling. No, Jesus sees them and he goes to them. But he goes to them in a way that they're not expecting. And so when they see Jesus walking on the water, they don't recognize him. They don't recognize him because he's doing something new. He's doing something impossible. And he's breaking what's real for them. Like, it's like their reality is getting smashed. And God is, God doesn't fit in that little box. And they still don't really know if Jesus is God. They're still figuring that out. So when they see Jesus, they don't recognize him. Now, think about it. Had they seen Jesus before? Yes, we know that. They were friends. They did life together. They ate together. They traveled together. They'd seen Jesus many times, but they didn't recognize him because he was doing something new. He was doing something different, and they think he's a ghost. Let's keep reading. As soon as they make that exclamation, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over to the other side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. When he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. I love that. I love everything about this story. First of all, I think it's really cool that Peter wanted to get out of the boat. If I was thinking it was a ghost or it was still like, maybe it's Jesus, I would still be grateful I'm in the boat. But Peter, you know, he wants to step out. He wants to go to Jesus. And Jesus says, come. And so Peter responds to the voice of God and he steps out of the boat, out of his comfort zone and out of the possible into the impossible. And he begins to look at Jesus and walk on water. That must have been amazing. Like, I don't know, that must have been such a crazy experience. The storm is still raging. Things are still crazy, but Jesus is in that storm and he's above it and he's he's showing his power in that storm. And Peter's doing so well until he begins to look 
at the wind and look at the waves and he begins to sink. He gets distracted and he starts to paying attention to what's real around him, which it is real, like he's in a storm. But Jesus was demonstrating his power in that storm and was calling Peter towards him to a deeper relationship and a deeper understanding of who he is. And Peter, you know, he gets distracted and he gets overwhelmed and he begins to sink. He gives in to fear. And Jesus is so committed to him in that place. Jesus goes out, saves him, pulls him up and, and talks to him. This is such a cool story for us today. You know, there might be a storm going on around us. There's things that are outside of our control, things that are making us feel really threatened and unsafe. Maybe there's a storm going on inside of you. You know, you're just struggling with some pretty dark thoughts and some dark feelings. You know, this is a disappointing time and a time that we weren't expecting. And as I said before, it feels like the same old, but Jesus sees you. He's with you. He's coming towards you and he's calling you to come to him. God wants to do something new in your life, but we have to let God do that. We have to ask him to show us. And so Jesus and Peter have this special moment where a couple of chapters later, when Jesus asks the disciples, who do you think I am? Peter knows. In fact, he goes from knowing to believing. He goes from knowing to believing because of his experience with Jesus. You might know a lot about God. You might know he's good and he's strong and he's real. But it's so easy for us to forget what we know about God or what we believe about God when we look at what's going on around us that's also real. You know, Jesus doesn't go over to Peter and say, Peter, what are you freaking out about? There's no wind. There's no waves. There's no storm. No, Jesus doesn't deny the reality. He doesn't deny what's real to Peter, but he wants to show him a greater way. He wants to show him his power, that God is for real that God is doing something new in your life. I'm just going to keep saying it. And he wants to see that he's already begun. He wants to invite us into what he's doing because he's a God of relationship. He's a God that's personal. So what do we do with this? The picture I got when I was praying for you is just this picture here. You know, holding our hands open during this season. This is a difficult season and some of us are trying to cling on to plans or we're trying to cling on to our expectations or maybe even cling on to things for comfort, but we just need to be open-handed. And why do we need to be open-handed? What, what position is this? This is a position of surrender. And surrender is not a word we talk about very often. In fact, some of us can think of surrender as a negative word because surrender is what people do when they're losing a war. You know, like they surrender, they give up. And surrender can feel like loss. You know, I've got to let go. I've got to let go of the things that I really wanted. Let go of the things that are in my hand. But I want to hopefully change your thoughts on this today. See, I have got open hands right now, and this is a position of surrender. But it's not one of loss. It's one to receive. This is a position ready to receive. I can't receive a gift if my hands are full. If I'm holding heaps of things, I can't receive a gift. One time I was rushing to my car for my sister's birthday, and I had all her gifts. Like I had a whole bunch of gifts that I was taking to the car. I had my phone in my hand as well and my keys. And as I was trying to get to the car, it started raining. So I'm running to get away from the rain and not wreck my phone and her presence, my sister's presence. And as I get to my car and I'm trying to open the car, I couldn't actually do it. I couldn't take on anything else. And I began to drop things out of my hands. I had no room to grab my keys out of my pocket and put it into my door and open my door. So I couldn't get to where I wanted to go because I was holding on to all these things. And, you know, sometimes we're holding on to good things, but it's still going to stop us from receiving something new. And so having, a, having hands that are open and trusting God that even if he wants us to let go of good things, like I had some good plans. You know, I had good plans, plans that even I felt like God was, was giving me opportunities to do. But they're canceled now. They're not happening. And I have to be open handed. And I've had to let go of those plans and be like, God, you can show me a better way. God, will you show me what you're doing in this time? You may have had plans change. You might be opening your hand right now and letting go of things that are scary for you to let go of. But if I can encourage you, God wants to do something new. He wants to give you something new. You won't be able to receive it if you're not open and ready and desiring him to do that for you. God has a purpose for you. He has a purpose for you and it's not far in the future. 
You don't have to wait until you're a certain age or until you finish a university degree or you've done all the things you feel like that qualify you for his purpose. God has a purpose for you and it's in the here and now. He has a purpose for you today and in this time. I really pray and hope that you can receive it. God is for real, you guys. And I love it that that's that theme because we have the opportunity to God, for God to show us a side of him that we haven't seen before. In our reality, in our storm, with everything that's going on, Jesus is walking towards us and it's going to be okay. And he's going to show us something better and show us something different. So I want to leave that with you today. Be encouraged. God sees you. He loves you. He's with you. And he's able to do what you cannot do for yourself. So open up your hands and let him in. Thank you. I feel so empowered after those words of affirmation and encouragement. Thank you so much, Sarah, for sharing that word from your heart with us. It is such a blessing to be able to hear that and take something away from that. We're going to split up into our discussion groups and study groups now, guys. So jump into those voice chat rooms so we can create some space for the spirit to move and we can create an opportunity for some prayer and discussion and just so that we can keep lifting you up and encouraging you.